Greetings to all of my lovely viewers. I'm Dr. Corey Stern. Welcome to Take Control of Your Health. And I'm very excited and honored to have a wonderful guest with me today, Dr. Tanya Bloom, who's an ophthalmologist, which is an eye doctor. And she actually has a holistic approach. So until I met her, I didn't even know there were ophthalmologists that work holistically. So I'm just so excited to have found her and uh, so happy that you agreed, Dr. Bloom, to come on my channel today. So let's start by just telling the viewers a little bit about yourself, who you are, and why you ended up becoming more holistic. Sure. Um, I'm an optometrist, just oh, not okay. optometrist, but <laughs> gotcha. so we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that. But yeah, so I... Um, graduated from the SUNY College of Optometry back in 2017, so I haven't been out practicing all that long. Um, after my graduation, I did an extra year residency specializing in pediatrics and vision rehabilitation. Nice. So a lot of the patients that I would see had many other systemic health issues apart from obviously just needing care for their eyes. Um, Two of the biggest ones were concussion and stroke. Um, and when you're dealing with those patients, taking a single system approach is not really the best way to help them to heal. And my residency supervisor was really good about bringing in a really holistic and well-rounded approach to helping manage and treat those patients. And that's something I've worked on trying to continue forward as I've opened my own practice and welcome those patients in and see them day, day in and day out. That's so amazing. And you know what you said about how it's so important to handle other body systems with patients who you were seeing who had um, concussions and strokes, but it's actually true uh, regardless of what somebody's symptoms are or what organs or body parts are <laughs> not working properly, right? So that's actually exactly what I do for a living. I help people with any symptoms that they have, uh, regardless of the origin of it. So let's, let's talk about eye health and, and vision health in relation to nutrition, right? There are so many essential nutrients that people need for their eyes to be healthy. And most people don't know what they are and never think about it. Right. So yeah, certainly, you know, if we're talking kind of broad spectrum support for the eyes, we're talking about helping the front of the eyes stay nice and lubricated, and we're helping support the back of the eyes. So the two kind of ways I like to look at it are improving circulation and reducing inflammation, right? So anything that's going to help you be able to do that, to be able to detoxify are really going to be what's going to benefit the health of the eyes the most. But when you're talking about specific nutrients, I think the ones that people might have learned about or heard about um, have to do with supporting the macula. Um, and those are lutein and zeaxanthin. Those are two major antioxidants that support the health of the eyes. Um, and I always like to have people find it, you know, from good food sources. So certainly any of your dark leafy greens are going to be really high in those sources. Um, and not just kale, we're talking spinach, Swiss chard, um, and even um, goji is another good source of that. Um, and then there certainly are supplements on the market that can help increase those as well, but I always want people to start from getting it from their foods. Um, some of the other vitamins are vitamin A, C, and E. So those three are really important for supporting the health of the front and back of the eyes. So we're talking again about fruits and vegetables that might be higher in those um, vitamins. Um, zinc, is another big one. So when we're trying to support the health of the eyes, we want people to have things that are higher in zinc, things like certain nuts, um, cashews and pumpkin seeds, things like, like that. And even with vitamin E, almonds, sunflower seeds. So getting a lot of those healthy nuts in your diet is really helpful. 
Um, and then the other major one um, that there's really been a big explosion of research in terms of supporting eye health is omega-3s. So both from non-vegetarian sources, obviously fish is going to be your biggest source of that. Um, <clears throat> any fatty fish is going to be really high in omega-3s, but then you can get it from algae, chia seed, flax seed. So you certainly have options in terms of ways to incorporate it into your diet other than you know, eating fish for dinner every single day. Although certainly that would be <laughs> ideal, <laughs> just not always achievable in, in our day-to-day -day world. Um, Plus the challenge of getting good quality, um, non-toxic wild caught fish. Um, and then of course there are people that won't eat fish. And what I have found um, being a nutritionist is that um, there are many people who are starting off with a deficiency to begin with. And it's very hard, very difficult to correct a deficiency with food alone, especially in the United States where a lot of the foods are somewhat lacking in nutrients, right? It's actually hard to access really nutrient dense foods unless you're getting it from, uh, let's say an organic farm that has amazing soil. And even the org some of the organic farms uh, are new. If they're new, they still don't have all the nutrients, all the minerals that need to be in the soil. So it's one of the reasons why 100% agree that you have to start with a great diet. Um, and all the things you mentioned are really important for people to be eating. But most people, especially if they already have eye issues, are probably going to end up needing some supplementation. Um, I recently did a video on thyroid health and I talked about dark green leafy vegetables. So I just want to mention also all the vegetables that you uh, mentioned and I, I took notes while you were talking, but the, the kale and the spinach and the Swiss chard and all of those, um, if you do have thyroid issues, you want to make sure that you cook them. A lot of people juice with these raw dark green leafy vegetables and they have something called oxalic acid in them, which can cause thyroid damage. So just keep that in mind. Um, you know, uh, cook them to a degree and get, gets rid of the oxalic acid. So yeah, I am really interested in, um, first of all, the, the connection between zinc and eye health, because so many people are taking zinc right now to protect their immune system. And I have a quick, interesting story about this. I had a patient who was older, she was in her eighties and she came in with a diagnosis of diabetes. Uh, and I don't know if I've talked about this on, on my channel at all, and I will do a video on this alone, but your pancreas is one of the largest users of zinc in the body. So if you're diabetic, there's a good chance that you have zinc deficiency or that most of the zinc that you're taking in will end up helping your pancreas, but your eyes need it too. So this patient came in for help with diabetes. She did not tell me that she also had a condition called macular degeneration. And she literally had uh, bars in her vision, right? She had you know, spots in her vision that she couldn't see. Um, so she was getting treatment for it. Now, keep in mind, she didn't tell me any of this. She was getting injections, steroid injections into her eyeball which were extremely painful. And I didn't know about any of that. About three weeks uh, into my program in which I was giving her some zinc in a supplement form, she comes in and she says, Dr. Corey, are you giving me anything for my eyes? And I said, well, not specifically, we're working on your pancreas, but why do you ask? And she said, well, I didn't tell you, but I have macular degeneration and I had six injections in my eyeballs and it didn't help at all. And they stopped doing it. But she said, but the, the, the gray lines that I had are, are gone. And I said, what? She goes, yeah, they're gone. So I figured out on my own that the zinc 
that I was giving her to feed her pancreas actually also helped her eyes. And this is how you can actually prevent these types of problems from happening to begin with by making sure that you're getting adequate nutrients um, because the basis of any health condition starts with nutritional deficiency. Right, yeah, that's exactly right. Um, certainly one of the things that we do in my practice is we actually have a device that allows me to measure someone's macular pigment. So you can actually measure the carotenoids in someone's eye. They actually have ones for the whole body as well. Mm -hmm. But even young patients, actually, especially diabetics, will often test very low in their macular pigment. So even if they're not already showing signs of macular degeneration, those probably are the patients who need to go on a supplement. Um, even from a young age, I've tested um, type 1 diabetics, so as young as you know, 17, 18, who already are testing their macular pigment as being in dangerously low. Wow. That they're not absorbing the nutrients, right, from what they're taking into their bodies and or their right. diet not healthy enough. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Maybe a combination of the two. But again, that's where adding supplementation is a really useful tool in those patients, in addition to protecting their eyes in other ways. So trying to reduce UV exposure, protecting your eyes from blue light from screens, exercising, and then um, the biggest one for macular health is uh, smoking. So if someone is a smoker, it greatly increases their risk of macular degeneration by four times, and their macular pigment is often reduced in those cases. So they have to work even harder to then bring those nutrients back up. That's really great to know. I didn't realize that you can pick it up so early um, even in teenagers. And I think that's so important, especially like you said, if they are diabetic, um, what we know with people that have diabetes, uh, particularly type two is that usually they're sugar addicts. And if they are continuing to eat that, they're actually kicking nutrients out of their body, right? Sugar and sugar and minerals don't get along really well. They kind of counteract each other. So yeah, that the diet always needs to get handled. Wow, that's that's really great information. So let's talk about some of the other most common eye conditions that, um, at least in my practice, people come in with. I want to say dry eye is is really um, an epidemic. So it it particularly occurs in postmenopausal women. Um, so with postmenopausal women, they generally suffer from you know, dryness in general, and they need to have a lot of essential fatty acids like the omegas. And we also maybe give them evening primrose oil and, and black currant seed oil, and as much as we can uh, get some good fats into them. But I have found that even younger people are complaining about dry eye now. I'm suspecting it might be blue light. What, what's your uh, experience with that? Yes, um, definitely. I think, you know, since this pandemic, I think there's been a steady rise in patients coming in complaining of dry symptoms because mm. everyone is spending all day staring at their computer screen. Um, and there's really multiple factors that are contributing to that. Certainly, yes, staring at a device that has blue light is not the healthiest thing for our eyes in general. And it's affecting our nervous systems in ways that we may not even be realizing <laughs> um, until you know, things are a little bit further down the road. But the other big one is that we don't tend to blink as much. So our blink rate drops dramatically when we're staring at a device compared to a physical book. Um, so that's going to dry out the eyes that much faster. And if you're already prone to it because you have underlying inflammation, then it's just going to make those symptoms come on that much faster. Oh, I didn't know that about the blink rate reducing when you're looking at a device. That makes a lot of sense. I do have these blue light blockers that I usually wear. Um, super cheap. Uh, I do recommend everybody gets them. But I know that when you don't blink enough, you actually can end up with corneal damage. 
um, aside from, besides dry eye, you can end up with corneal damage. Yes, and, and I agree with you. I've certainly been having patients younger and younger. Um, we're in a college town, so I see plenty of college age students who are coming in complaining of pretty moderate to severe dry eye symptoms who just had never experienced anything like that before. And here in the Northeast, as we move into fall and winter, the environment becomes a big contributing factor. Mm -hmm. It's dry outside, it's dry inside. Yeah. It's really hard to get those humidity levels up. And sometimes simple things like wearing a sleep mask overnight. Um, so you're not getting quite as much seepage coming in through the lids, putting a humidifier in your workspace or your bedroom. Those small changes can really make a significant impact on how you're feeling symptomatically, but it's, it may or may not be getting at underlying uh, reasons why you're having the dry eye in the first place. Right. So a multi-pronged approach, making sure, first of all, that you drink enough water because if you're dehydrated, your eyeballs are going to be dry. Um, making right. sure you're getting enough good quality fatty acids like the omega-3s and then controlling your environment. I like to also suggest people use um, essential oil diffusers. So that puts a little humidity in the environment and it also improves your health with, depending on the oil that you're putting in there. Um, we also, both of us, I know, use um, a really excellent company called Natural Ophthalmics and they make tear stimulating eye drops that are completely natural, they're homeopathic. And I have a lot of patients using those. I use them myself when I need to. Right, yeah, so I, I'm a big fan of these drops. Um, they really work to help the body start to produce their own tears, which unlike a lot of the other lubricating drops on the market, which are really just a temporary fix, um, these are kind of working more long-term to help the body to do what it should be doing on its own. That's really the beauty behind having a drop that's homeopathic. Um, and the interesting thing is a lot of the prescription dry eye drops on the market are working on that same mechanism. So you might have seen commercials for Restasis or Zydra. They're both very popular because dry is so ubiquitous now. But natural ophthalmics you could consider as a more um, holistic alternative to using some of those prescription drops because it's actually trying to induce the body to perform that same service without needing um, something like cyclosporin to do it for you. Yeah, and they work beautifully. I love them. I use all of their products. And if anybody's interested and, and you're... I mean, not that we can't get it to you uh, outside the U.S., but definitely in the U.S., um, I'll put information on the description of the video. Uh, they have a lot of really excellent products. This is not a commercial for their company, but when I find something that works, I like to share the information. So they have um, healing eye drops for all various um, irritated eye conditions, contact lens wearers. Um, they have um, cataract eye drops, which was going to be one of the things I brought up um, uh, to literally dissolve the cataracts. Uh, and they have um, a total ocular function spray that has everything in there uh, under, uh, you know, under the sun. That's, that's probably my favorite product. Um, I always will recommend it to any patients, especially ones who have digestive issues like SIBO, um, because they're not able to digest other supplements quite so well. So sure. something that's um, presented sublingually really then bypasses that digestive tract and they're able to uptake those nutrients much more easily. Exactly. Yes. It's a spray. So it's very easy for people to um, be able to absorb it. Agreed. So um, let's, let's uh, make sure we hit all of the different um, complaints that people have. So we just mentioned cataracts um, that usually occurs in people over what, 60? Well, <laughs> getting younger and younger, I have to say. Everything so, is actually, so <laughs> that's so true. I would yeah. say probably even 
the age of 45 or 50 plus, I'm starting to see early signs of cataracts these days. It, it may or may not be impacting their vision significantly, but you know, the biggest complaint I hear with patients coming in is changes in, in night vision in particular. Right. So having more trouble seeing at night, being more sensitive to glare, you know, with the headlights on cars being as bright as they are these days, seeing all this haloing or star bursting around those lights, it can be quite a distraction and actually make it difficult to be driving um, in the evening hours or, you know, snowy days, rainy days, there are a lot of conditions where it might make seeing what's in front of you more challenging or distracting. And that's um, scary because it's not safe. Right. Yeah. Um, so certainly you mentioned the drops. So we, we do have some good tools to help slow down or possibly even start to reverse some of that progression. And again, you can think of cataracts as buildup in the lens inside the eye. There's some detoxification pathway that's not working in the way that it, it should. So the more you can support that through the whole body in particular, um, we talk about supporting the liver and the gallbladder, right? So helping those systems detoxify is really helpful for the eyes in particular for supporting the structure and integrity of the lens. Um, and the Cineraria drops, which natural ophthalmics makes, which is a homeopathic eye drop, when we have these early cases, that's where we find the most success in using those drops um, in addition you know, to supporting other healthy lifestyle habits. Yeah, prevention is key with cataracts because once they get bad enough, I think the only option ends up being surgery. But you know, if the drops, if it's too late for the drops to work. So, right, yeah. Right, yeah. And what's interesting also what you said, picking up on the liver. So yes, liver is your primary organ of detox, but the liver and the gallbladder are also needed to absorb fat. So when you're not absorbing fat properly, it ends up affecting your eyeballs, uh, uh, you know, among other important organs like your brain. Um, and, you know, basically everything, because every single cell in your body has, uh, a fat covering on it, but there is a, a, definitely a connection between eye health in general and your liver. Um, and yeah, so my whole channel is about avoiding toxins. Um, and if you are toxic, then you're going to have to detox. And that's something I can help you with if, you know, you are interested in, um, a virtual consult. So let's, uh, there's two more specific eye issues that I'd like to make sure we cover. Um, the next one is glaucoma. Okay, so yeah, glaucoma is a, a challenging one because it, there are many elements that we think contribute to elevated pressure that leads to optic nerve damage. So the idea is inside the eye, you have several important structures, right? The two most important in the back of the eye are your optic nerve and your macula. The problem with glaucoma is typically um, if the pressure in the eye remains elevated for too long, for reasons we don't completely understand yet, um, some patients will develop damage to their optic nerve. And really what we want to try to do is help encourage that pressure to start to decrease in the eye. That's the primary treatment that's recommended for patients right now. Um, <clears throat> but certainly there are other approaches, you know, certainly we take a more broad approach from a nutrition aspect. And then there are a couple other things we do in our practice that we have found very helpful. So I'll talk about the nutrition a little bit first. We've touched on many of these already, but certainly getting good antioxidants, fatty acids, um, vitamins. Um, and then the other one, few that maybe I would mention um, that are helpful for supporting the optic nerve are things like bilberry um, and ginkgo. So those are two that we might add in. Um, there are certainly many more than that. Um, but two other kind of tools that we found that can be really helpful um, one is light therapy. So we use light of certain wavelengths to help influence that nervous system. 
Um, certainly people are most familiar with using lamps in the winter. They're called sad lamps, right, to help improve your mood and things like that. Um, but we really take that to the next level because we're trying to use certain wavelengths to help stimulate circulation within the eye, help start to re-regulate that nervous system because we're finding if there's an imbalance there that may be causing the pressure to remain elevated. Um, and then the other one is um, microcurrent therapy. So um, many people are familiar with PMF, PEMF devices like the Beamer. Um, Dr. Corey, do you use the Beamer device? I don't, I, don't I don't use the Beamer, but I do have a PEMF mat in my practice that we stick patients on for therapy, yeah. <laughs> so um, we have a device similar to that, but just targeted towards the eyes that we use that we tend to have very good results for, actually for both macular degeneration and glaucoma because those are both circulatory problems that we're trying to address. Um, but really, the other one that I would add in there is with glaucoma, you want to make sure that you're having an active lifestyle. Um, a few things that, you know, have been found to be helpful are certainly exercising more. Um, and um, sometimes even things like acupuncture can be very beneficial for patients, especially in acute cases of elevated pressure to help start to regenerate um, and regulate that system. That makes sense. And we use also um, a supplement from my favorite nutritional supplement company, Standard Process. It's called AC Carbamide. And that what, what that does, it actually um, regulates fluid balance. So it pulls fluid out of places where it doesn't belong. And so the eyes with glaucoma, um, you have a, a fluid buildup, which is what causes the pressure and the AC carbamide can facilitate this process of reducing uh, the fluid buildup. So that does work for some people. Um, I'm, just, I'm just making notes as we're talking so I can make sure I put all of this on the description. So the other supplement that we use a lot for in general for all eye issues, for, also from standard process is this, it's called Iplex. And I take this myself, so I'm 58 and I'm not generally needing reading glasses at all. And as long as I take my Iplex, um, we put people of all ages on it, it's just a general, you know, eye um, vitamins and minerals and like an eye multivitamin. And um, I recently um, was on vacation for eight days, I for forgot it. Or, or I couldn't find it, I lost it. And then I, so I didn't take it for eight days. And by the end of that eight days, I was needing reading glasses. And when I got home, I went back on it. And uh, now I don't need the glasses anymore. So it's really effective. Um, I love that supplement. So I do wanna talk about as the last um, condition that people complain about, um, blurry vision or, or farsightedness, uh, which occurs as the eyes age. And, just, and then you had told me um, earlier that you actually recommend some eye exercises. So I wanna talk about that as well. And just before we do that, I just wanna give a shout out to my truth partner, um, Hats Hardcore Awaken Truth Seekers, the most informative truth movement out there. This wonderful organization um, gives valuable information and we do want you to join them to be part of a real community to get real truth. So they have an online store with some amazing products. I'm wearing one of their t-shirts right now. That's my um, hats truth t-shirt. And I have my hats truth mug that I always drink my water out of. And they have yoga mats and they have organic tote bags and all kinds of cool stuff. And we hope that you'll check them out and support them. Uh, the links will be on the description of this video. So, okay, getting back to the, you know, farsighted or blurry vision. Um, and I guess it would apply to nearsightedness too, right? The eye exercises that you do recommend. Yeah. So we know that um, your lens starts to change shape as you age. Usually it's hitting people around 40. I'm finding that to be like the marker. Um, but in any case, no matter what your, uh, 
you know, farsighted, nearsighted vision is, there are ways that you can strengthen your eyes. Yes, that's right. So certainly I think it can be somewhat disconcerting for people who've seen well their whole life um, for their vision to certainly suddenly start to change. And it can actually feel very acute. One day you wake up and you just can't read the paper anymore. Um, so we've developed a few tools. Certainly we do what's called vision therapy or vision rehabilitation. We do different eye exercises to help really strengthen not just the muscles in the eye because they're some of the strongest muscles in your body but really strengthen the eye brain connection so giving the brain as much feedback as possible in terms of what is clear in front of you how well do two eyes work together because often what will identify when these patients come in is that there's some difference between how they're using the two eyes that's really causing the vision to start to deteriorate more quickly so they're having trouble focusing at close range their eyes aren't coordinating well together they might not be tracking appropriately and all of that is causing their vision to start to feel blurrier than it may need to or have to um, so we work on trying to build a little bit of that flexibility back and that focusing and eye teaming system to allow them to read more comfortably for longer periods of time um, the other thing that I often recommend um, are actually basically what you would say is eye yoga, different exercises that you might do in the yoga room, eye stretches, <clears throat> different eye movements to really keep those muscles as flexible and moving as much as possible. Um, there are some really great resources out there, but certainly um, YouTube has become a great resource for everyone to try and look things up. Although certainly if they're interested in vision therapy in particular, um, I would recommend that they go to the COVD website. That's the College of Optometrists and Visual Development. Um, they have a doctor locator tool. There's doctors all over the country. Um, so we can really help support someone in their path to seeing better and kind of self healing their, their vision in that way. That's fantastic. Is that something that can be done virtually also? I would imagine you could help people virtually with exercises. Yeah, that wasn't something we were doing a lot pre-pandemic, but we have pivoted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so most of our patients still prefer to come into the office, but we have virtual patients we work with. Um, we've had, again, patients that we work with all over the country. So it doesn't, you don't have to live in upstate New York to be able to get the care that, that you need. Great. So we'll put your link in the description as well if people want to reach out to you, um, as well as a COVD website. So you can look for something if you want to get therapy in person. Um, that's, yeah, that's fantastic. There's just one more um, condition that I want to mention. Um, I don't get as many complaints about this, but it's enough of a problem that I think we should just talk about it. And that is floaters, right? People actually seeing uh, little tiny specks in front of their vision. And from what I understand, it's not necessarily dangerous or an indicator of any kind of serious problem, but it can be very annoying. That's correct. Um, in 99% of cases, floaters are benign. They're, like you said, bothersome, but they're not harmful to the health of the eyes. Um, in rare cases though, if patients are having lots of floaters, big floaters or flashes in their vision, that could be a sign of something more serious and they should go to see their eye doctor. Um, but most of the time, um, a lot of our treatment approaches are similar to things we've spoken about already actually. Um, so Natural Ophthalmics does have a great product. Um, they have floater pellets that we have found really good success with. Um, and the other big one, certainly that we already touched on is supporting liver. Um, so the idea is that the floaters are kind of these build up in the, what's called the vitreous, the jelly inside the eye, those pieces start to clump together. And then you're actually seeing that when light's coming into the eye. What we wanna do is try to break those clumps up by again, supporting circulation and detoxification, all the things that we've already spoken about. 
Um, so really bringing a lot of those tools together. So doing the, the nutrition support, supporting the liver, the supplement, and then we've also found that the light therapy as well can be very helpful for, again, just helping reduce the, the floaters over time. So really, like you said, just kind of taking that multi-system approach. Um, a lot of people think there's nothing they can do for their floaters, but that's not necessarily the case. Yeah, I was tortured by them for years and I got some liver support and took the floater pellets and well, I'm just realizing right now I don't have them anymore. So I don't really, you know, sometimes when something goes away and it's, it's not a problem anymore, you don't even realize it until you think about it. So, all right, this was fantastic. I really appreciate you taking time out of your busy practice to give us all of this wonderful information about eye health, which is so important, right? Nobody ever wants to lose their vision. Um, so, and, and it's really a priority. Um, people don't think of it that way, but it really it needs to be something that people focus on because there are just too many things that can go wrong. So thank you so much. I will make sure you send me all your information before um, I put the video up so we can make sure people can reach out to you if they want to. And then uh, maybe we'll do this again with more information because uh, there's more to talk about, right? Yeah, um, I'd love to. And thank you so much for having me. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you so much. All right. And we'll see you all again soon. If you uh, like this video, if it helped you, please don't forget to hit the like button and, and most importantly, share this with anybody that you know that you think would benefit it, from it. And if you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, please do so now. It will just make my day and we'll see you all again very soon.